black as a dark room with no lights on. I started to come to, and the light was burning into my eyes like a runaway freight train. Sounded, and I dove off the tracks. Thomas! Thomas! What are you doing? I had fallen asleep on my desk after a late night of sleuthing in the dark city alleys. And I couldn't let her know I was hallucinating again. So, just doing some morning push-ups. Gotta stay in shape. Well, you will have to start getting up earlier if you want to do them in the morning because it's 2 p.m. Why are you waking me up at this early hour? Because you haven't paid me for six weeks and you have a potential client in the outer office. Well... Send the pigeon in, darling. Maybe we both can eat this week. Thomas Colt, P.I. Meet Dean James of MITU. What can I do for you, Dean James? Very good to meet you, Mr. Colt. We are experiencing a baffling mystery that is apparently befuddling the local constabulary. Baffling the who? That's the police, Thomas. Oh, well, the local beatwalkers make the Keystone cops look like college eggheads. No offense, Dean James. Right. There have been a series of thefts from various locations of immensely valuable items. The curiosity is the thief has left other priceless items behind. The robbery started 13 days ago with the theft of a delicate sculpture called the Silver Beanstalk from the Emerald Tower where it was on display. Maybe Jack is in town. What? Never mind, Dean. Bad joke. What else has been stolen? Eight days ago, a million-dollar painting by Richard Van Dyke called Field of Daisies was stolen from the Metropolitan Museum. Five days ago, a collector of ancient artifacts came back to his home in Devonshire Gates to discover his porcelain pineapple missing. A beanstalk? Daisies? Pineapple? Sounds like someone is putting together a luau. This dean is kooky. Three days ago, the golden snail of Cusco was taken from the University Museum of Archaeology. Snail? This case was moving like a snail, running a marathon. Two days ago, a Stradivarius violin was stolen from the University Music Conservatory. Yesterday, there were two thefts. A parchment drawing of the Parthenon of Calancrates, and a crystal sunflower art piece. Margie, bring me a map of the city. Where did those last two capers happen? The parchment was stolen from the architectural department at the university, and the crystal sunflower was stolen from my office in the administrative building. We have to go right now. There's going to be another theft today. Hang on, Dean. We got to burn rubber. Thomas, don't save the Dean by killing him. Why are we rushing? What's happening? There's a pattern for the robberies. We need to get to the building southeast of the administrative hall. That would be the Advanced Sciences Building. How do you know that's the place? From the pattern, Dean. From the pattern. There's the Advanced Science Building. The one with the columns. This is a huge building. How will we know what's going to be stolen? Look, I discovered the building. We need someone who can tell us what valuable objects might be in here. Professor Ziskovavetsky is our top scientist. He would be the best person to consult. I read in the paper that Professor Ziskovavetsky won a Nobel Prize in nuclear physics. He is a genius in physics, chemistry, and mathematics. He also is an inventor of amazing new gizmos. Just what we need. A slobbering contest over Professor Zibzahui. I'm sure he's the cat's meow of the science world. Let's find him so we can stop the next robbery. Ah, Professor Zitskovatsky. We need your help. Is there something in the building that a thief would want to steal? Hmm. Very interesting question. Why do you ask? There have been many thefts of wonderful artifacts in the last two weeks. And Mr. Colt thinks the next one is going to be here. I knew if I didn't take control, the thief was going to empty the building like a bad opera singer at a blues festival. Professor Lavlahuzgi, look at this. What do you make of these weird things that have been stolen? Look, I followed this curve that connects each of the thefts in the order they happen to lead us here today. Hmm. Very interesting. Thirteen, eight, five, three, two, one, one. That's the Fibonacci sequence. Fiba who? Fibonacci is the name we use for Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa, a 13th century mathematician who popularized a series of numbers with amazing properties. 
Those numbers have led to the golden rectangle, the divine proportion, and the golden spiral. Hmm. Sunflowers? The knowledge shell? Beanstalks? Actually, all of these things that you have written down here are connected to Fibonacci. What Fibber McGee items are in this building? That's Fibonacci, Thomas. And maybe the dean should call the police if we know a crime is about to be committed? Well, we'll call Captain O'Mumbles right away. Calling Captain O'Mumbles to a crime scene was like having a squirrel work on your car. He had no idea what's going on in there. Is there anything Fibba, Fibba, is there any of this golden stuff that is actually made out of gold? Hmm? Nothing gold. There is a Lord William Parsons, the Earl of Ross's sketch of the pinwheel galaxy he made on his Leviathan telescope. It is very valuable. Fibonacci spiral defines the curve of the galaxy's arm. Where is this sketch? Hmm? This guy needs to get his nose fixed. He sounds like a hummingbird with a head cold. Ah, yes, in the ancient documents room. Mr. Colt, do you think we will run into any foul play? Well, we don't know who the Fibonacci thief is, but he seems to be quite brilliant. He will probably be prepared for a worst case scenario. Then we better take this. Well, gentlemen, the crime spree is over. The police are on their way. Get them, boys. I knew we were in trouble. All I had for backup was a cute secretary and a Nobel Peace Prize winner. I had brought the Girl Scouts to a back alley rumble. The big guy with the eye patch came at me, and I tried to punch him in his good eye. My fist hit his face like a melted stick of butter hitting an anvil. Thug 2 grabbed me from behind and I closed my eyes, waiting for the right hook that was coming from left field. All of a sudden, I saw stars and light, and everything went black. That train horn was sounding again. Hmm. Maybe I had it turned up too high. That's the hardest I've ever been hit. Did they get away? No, Thomas, they're right next to you. Professor Z stopped them with his gizmo. The mastermind escaped, but all the stuff they stole is right here in this big trunk. Looks like I missed the excitement. What's the junk in the trunk? Just several millions of Fibonacci artifacts, Captain. Fibonacci's amazing number sequence and its resulting formulas and patterns are found all through nature. It looks like a swirl of a fingerprint. Those patterns look like a fingerprint. Maybe a fingerprint of God. I wasn't going to say it out loud, but I think Margie was right. Only God could explain the crazy Italian guy's number in such strange places from a sunflower to a galaxy. <laughs> when we got the lights back on, the trunk was gone, with my finder fee reward. Mastermind was gone, and all he left was a large bone with a cryptic note that read, I know who you are, Thomas Colt, and you will never catch me. But here's a clue, just to make it interesting. <laughs> Stay tuned for next time, when Thomas Colt faces his most baffling case so far against his arch-nemesis, Mastermind, in the Great Bone Mystery.